Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm Mike. He's Kuz. We appreciate you guys joining us for Toyota Voices. And uh, look, this is the 40, for, actually, more than 41 years now that the Lakers and Toyota have been partnered up. Kuz, uh, of course, uh, just about double your lifetime. And mm -hmm. you guys just had a, a little uh, film session. Uh, why don't you give us a quick update on it? Because there wasn't an actual practice, right? But you just had some time off the court. How'd that go? Uh, went good. <clears throat> uh, you know, watch a little film. Uh, you know, just got our thoughts out. Uh, collectively and um, you know, just trying to get back on the right page. So, Yeah, so it's been a tough couple of weeks just in terms of the loss column because you guys were in so many games, uh, aside from the Houston one, weren't able to just pull out the victory, seemed like the elusive mm -hmm. victory. So was that part of what you guys discussed, just how to how to get back into that good yeah, mindset? Yeah, just how to get back into that winning mindset, uh, winning mentality, you know, try to get in the wins column, you know, um, been the other column for uh, much of the season. So, you know, we're just trying to, you know, figure out some things so all right cool so look uh this is your chance to get at kyle kuzma i know that a lot of people have been excited to ask you a bunch of questions <clears throat> Kuz, so we're going to get to them let me do this first though uh the quad mm. so you got you took a knee at some point went out we saw you on the bike uh, we were able to come back in the game and finish it and just wondering how it feels today um no kind of sore um you know did a lot of treatment today um you know for the majority of the time you know been here for a while just you know trying to uh, prepare um, to you know get healthy. So, got so I'm assuming that you would you would hope to play tomorrow, but you have to wait and see how it feels. Uh, yeah. do, okay. Yeah. So at this point, you probably don't know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, all right. Let's start with a question, Kyle, from Abby. Abby. And Abby wants to know what would you consider a successful season? Um, you know, uh, no, I would say, you know, a season to where, you know, we get better, you know, as the season progresses, you know. Um, I think this year is we want to win as much as possible, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, it, it's hard to compete in this league at the top level with, you know, very veteran teams and whatnot. So, you know, for us, you know, we just want to um, make a foundation for, our, you know, the future of, you know, our organization and, you know, the way we play and just sit a tone. So I think that's part of being a successful season for us. You know, that's the thing. If, if you take out last night's game and, you know, maybe the Portland game, uh, and even though injuries have been a part of this, Kuz, there, that's, you guys have done a pretty good job of establishing the kind of the way that you want to play, uh, battling, running, uh, sharing the ball. That, that, those things had started to become staples, mm. but just weren't quite able to get some of those wins. Right. right. Uh, bless you. So you. that's – how do you guys square that? Because you, you want to feel – it feels good in one hand, I'm sure, where you feel like you're making steps and the young guys are playing well. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, it just – nobody likes to lose. And, and most of you guys haven't lost much in your lives playing basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, just got to find that balance. <clears throat> you know, none of us like to lose. But, you know, we also know that, you know, we're a very young team. And we know we have, you know, steps and it's a process to what we have to do to – you know, get up to uh, a championship caliber level uh, mindset and play on the court. So um, I think that's just really what it is. So All right, let's go to a question from Jack Mendez. Uh, which jersey is your favorite to wear? And now you've had, look, okay, so uh, you, you have the gold, the purple, the white. Uh, the You're about to be able to wear the, the Kobe-inspired black one. Definitely and then the black the, one. Oh, you're, you're I like, haven't okay. worn it yet, but I know that's going to be my favorite that's, one. That's the one? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you like about it? Uh, I just like the design, you know, it's slick, um, you know, it symbolizes something, um, you know, and I, I like to wear black, so I would definitely say that one. Uh, the blue ones are cool, you know, um, growing up that was one of my favorite jerseys, you know, just to see, you know, on the floor. The throwback Minneapolis? Throwback ones, yeah. yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of those two. Did, did you get into the throwback jersey phase when you were in a, the middle school, high school? Did you have a bunch of jerseys? Yeah, I had a ton. Jersey, give me yeah. some of your give me some of your favorites. <clears throat> oh man, I had a I had a Vince Carter's um, Toronto one with the with the dinosaur on it. Sure, and that's the yeah. classic one. No, um, you know I had a Baron Davis, uh, Charlotte Hornets one. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have the purple or teal? Uh, teal. Okay, yeah. I had a teal one. Nice. Um, man, I had a um, what was it? Do you have any Jordan jerseys? No, I had a I, mean, I had a Vancouver Grizzlies jersey too. That was probably one of my favorites too. Yeah. Big country? Uh, no. Brian, Brian man, I was trying to think of who it was. Stoudemire? Sharif Sh Abdul Rahim? No. What? No. Oh, Peanut Gallery? Any other? I don't know. Somebody. We'll get we'll get back to that. Uh, I was younger. Baby? Nah, not oh, Baby. Okay. Somebody. I don't know. 
might have been an off-brand player. I was, I, don't know. I was listening to something. I think it, I think it was I think it was Jared Jack. I was listening to you say something about this. The uh, when, when the original like Mike Bibby had the original foam posits on or something. Uh -huh. He was wearing it. Uh, it uh, for Arizona in some game. Everyone was talking about. Do you remember? Was there a shoe? And some people ask about shoes, but was there a shoe in Flint that like a, one specific one you remembered? A certain pair of Jordans or something else that was the, the kind of the one for you? The one. Uh, I mean, for me, I used to like you know Air Force Ones. You know that was a big thing growing up. Um, I remember being like fifth or sixth grade, and Mike Vick had a shoe come out, and that was like one of my favorite shoes of all time too. Uh, it was like a Zoom, Air Zoom, Vic, something like that. Like is Atlanta, Mike Vic? Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta, yeah. yeah. That's, that's nice, okay. All right, uh, yeah. <laughs> William Jesse Coos would like to know, where do you see yourself in this young core in 15 years? Shoot. You'll be uh, my age in Man, 15 years. I don't even know where, where we see each other tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, You're looking way ahead. Uh, well, that's way you, gotta, ahead. You, know, you gotta look ahead in your you future. You gotta look ahead. Uh, whew. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, we all get to you know, stay together and, you know, grow and, um, you know, do what we can potentially do. You know, I feel like um, the young core is, you know, very special and is one of the best in the, you know, league that the league has to offer to watch. So, um, you know, I can't really, you know, say where we're going to be, but I say, you know, if, if we continue to grow and progress like we are, get more experience and, you know, the sky's the limit for, um, the year 2065. So yeah, well, look, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll check the math on that one. I'm not sure that no. but, uh, but uh, <laughs> you you were going, you were overshooting on purpose, obviously. Uh, any young player in the NBA who has talent it is titles are going to be the goal, right? And, and sure, you, maybe you want to add a couple All Star appearances to, to, as your prove your individual worth, but that's that's eventually going to be the goal. Of course, you all want to try to win a championship. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see how that goes for you and the rest of the league. All right, Gianna Silva. Question is, in what ways do you see yourself needing improvements on and off the court, Kyle? Um, there's a lot of things. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, on the court, I need, I need to become a better ball handler. Um, you know, I need to, you know, keep learning, you know, um, you know, help side defense and learning um, the different aspects of, you know, that, you know, because it's much different than what I've been used to. Um, you know, um, being being more efficient, I feel like I can do that even though I've been pretty efficient. Um, just get to my spots and whatnot, and um, you know, I think those are just you know some things. Gotcha. So, you know, it's it's funny we say about the weak side defense because it's very rare that a rookie, a wing, or, or a guard can can have a a big impact weak side defensively. And, and part of that, look, even if somebody, so Kevin Durant, rookie year, we think of him now as such an elite, I'm pulling up his stats, you know, so 20 points, it's immediately a, a, a great score, uh, but not shooting efficiently. He was about 43%, and he was only age 19. Uh -huh. But defensively, you know, he hadn't started to bring that part of his game around yet. And in fact, that took multiple years. And, and I, th I when you watch young players sometimes, is it that you, there's so much to kind of learn and figure out and what you have to do with carrying the load offensively to a degree? Is that, does that defensive part just take some more time uh, on the court to not, not necessarily just figure out, but just to, to know how, to, how and when to do it? Uh, like how, how would you describe that? Yes and no. Uh, you know, I feel like, um, you know, to be a great player, you have to do both. And, um, you know, for me, I want to eventually be a great player and I want to be a good defender um, in this league. So I feel like, um, you know, just certain steps along the way, you know, you're not going to be great at everything at once. And, you know, that's a, that's every player, you know. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard couldn't shoot at all, and now he's one of the best shooters in the league, um, best offensive players in the league, and he was never known for that, you know. So, um, you know, I think it's just all about, you know, taking that necessarily time to develop and. Mm -hmm. Um, look at those certain type of aspects to get better at, and you know, keep you know pecking up, pecking at them. So it makes sense. Well, one thing that's been a surprise for some people that just looked at your college stats and didn't you know necessarily see how you improved. And I know the Lakers did. Uh, Jesse Buss and his staff, Rob Palenka, uh, and everybody who noticed that you started shooting the three ball much better about midway through the season at Utah. And I think mm -hmm. that was something that we've talked about before. But Still, the fact that you're shooting the percentage you're shooting now shows something, and whether that's uh, not necessarily a tweak, but all of the work that you put in in the off season. When did when did it start to get comfortable for you? Was it 
later on at Utah? Was it uh, was it over the summer? Was it mm -hmm. did, is it just built naturally? Because uh, because obviously right now you know you look pretty confident shooting from all over the floor from three. Mm. You know I, I I've always been able to shoot honestly. Um, in high school that's all I really did was shoot threes. Uh, didn't really do much else until I went to college. And I learned that there was more to the game. You're playing like Nick uh, Young in high school? That was your? That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Just threes. Just getting buckets. Three-point line, three-point line. That's it. Um, but, no, I went to college, and, um, you know, that didn't go too well. So, you know, I had to do other things to learn how to um, – different aspects, and I had to do them. And um, I feel like in college earlier, I kind of lost my confidence shooting because, uh, you know, it was a different level. Um, or whatnot, it could be whatever. Mm -hmm. um, just lost my confidence shooting. And then um, the second half of my junior year, you know, it kind of really clicked for me to uh, just the shooting. You know, I, I always worked at it, I always knew I could shoot, but, you know, it's all mental. And I feel like um, there's a point in time in the first half of my junior season, I probably shot like 20, 20 to 25%. And I'm thinking like, okay, if I want to go to the league, then I gotta just shoot it. So I had a, you know, a effort mentality, you know, in my head to be like, okay, well, this is not gonna go up unless, you know, I just had this mentality and I could just, you know, just keep shooting it and whatnot, you know. So from there, I think that second half, I shot like 40 something percent for three. Yeah. And that really, you know, gave me confidence to, you know, if I can do this, and you know, I can. You know, you know, continue to keep doing it if I just think this way, you know, and, you know, it helps. So. Look, and, and this is, uh, this proves kind of the value of scouting when you're, when these teams are really watching players on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the kind of thing you wouldn't know if you just kind of parachuted in once in a while and you looked and you're shooting 32% right. or whatever. And it's like, oh, he wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't shooting the ball well. Right. Uh, so, so that's, it's something that is certainly paid off for the Lakers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here's a question, Koo, is how is playing in the NBA different from playing in college? Everybody always says, a pace of play, not to step on the question, but is there something aside from that that you feel like is uh, is the main thing you've noticed? Um, I think that's one of the biggest things, just the pace. Um, you know, in college, I feel like, you know, it's 100 miles per hour. Everybody's just, you know, trying to get their rocks off, per se. You know, just 100 miles per hour nonstop. Yeah. And, you know, in the league, it's, it's 100 miles, but it's also 100 miles, then it might be... 15 miles per hour, then 100 again. Like, it's a different type of pace and feel of how you have to play. Um, the spacing is a lot different. Um, I think that's one thing that really has helped open up my game from college to the NBA. Um, because in college, you know, you have, there's like, there's no three seconds, you know. Um, so you can may, you maybe can stand in the paint and have three different guys there looking at you <coughs> while you're trying to make a move and it's no, it's crowded. Right. So. You know, for the NBA, you can't do that. So, you know, there's more isolation opportunities, um, you know, more seams to get into. So I think uh, those are the biggest differences. All right. So last night was a rare rough shooting night for you. You've been shooting the ball lights out lately. Before last night, you did six threes, two, three, seven, and four in the previous five games. And, you know, a lot of the shots were short. Is it is it too easy to conclude? Oh well, he'd played 40 minutes in four of the five previous games. Legs were tired. Like it's, it's easy for us to judge that. I'm wondering if you felt that in your legs, or if it was just simply an off shooting night. Um, I mean, uh, probably a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, you know, you can't be rock solid every single night. Sure. You know, uh, even Kobe had his worst nights. He's one of the greatest scorers of all time. You know. Um, LeBron has bad nights. Everybody has bad shooting nights. So it's, you know, it's going to happen. And, of course, I'm a rookie. So, um, you know, it just it's, it comes with it. So, sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, how do the legs how – do, how do you feel? Just a couple of questions here. Let's see from uh, – I already lost who the name was. Let's just call him John. Uh, question <laughs> from John. It was essentially about how do you feel – how do your legs feel, like just generally speaking, because now you've played a, basically a full college season, uh -huh. right? And, and you're doing it against the best athletes in the world, and you're defending some of the best guys on all these other teams too. You know, going, you're, you're getting possessions on LeBron. You're getting possessions on Durant. Mm -hmm. So physically, how are you feeling? Uh, I mean, I'm feeling, you know, solid, you know, sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, it's a long season. You know, we have like 40-something more games left. 
Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely different in college. Um, you know, you're guarding the best guys. You know, it takes a toll on you. Um, your body's always lingering. You know, one night it might right. be something, and then the next night it'd be something else, you know, wrong with you. So um, that's just one of the things to really, you know, get adjusted to. Jonathan would like to know who's better at one-on-one, -on -one, you or Lonzo? Uh, we've seen you guys go at it. I know this has been, uh, whether it's a half-court shot or one-on-one -on -one itself, but uh, I'll, I'll let you answer it. Who's one -on -one? better? One-on-one? You, you and Lonzo, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, probably me. Yeah. You want, want to add to that at all? I mean, okay. it's nothing to really add. Okay. I mean, it's just plain and simple. Yeah, I mean, got it. too small. Too small, yeah. Put them, too small. Yeah, put them, get them down inside. Uh, whatever. Yeah. It's too small. Okay. <laughs> got you. <laughs> Nick wants to know who was your favorite team growing up. Favorite team? Um, Pist I was a, Pist a Pistons fan. Um, you know, Laker fans aren't probably going to like this, but, you know, uh, I was very happy when the Pistons won. Um, they, 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 you know, you're, you're from you know, Flint. I'm, I'm you know? from there. Yeah, you know, I was a big Tayshaun Prince fan. Sure. Um, did big, you see him last big night? Ben. Uh, I did see him. You saw Tayshaun? Yeah, yeah. I did see him. I did see him. Um, but, you know, I, growing up, I was a big Pistons fan. Makes sense. How about uh, other teams? Did you did you go Lions? Oh, all Detroit teams. Okay, all the yeah, okay. so, Tigers. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not I'm not a fake fan. So you know, if I'm from somewhere, then I rep you know those teams. Yeah, know. yeah. So, I mean, it's how it should be. You know, of course. Yes, they have yeah. random people from from I don't know Michigan, and they might be cowboy fans. Like, how are you a cowboy fan? Look, how, does that's, that work? how does that work? You know, look, it, it's complicated, but I, I I hear what you're saying. So now there are there are Laker fans, of course, all over the world. And so that's sometimes when they have teams in their own city, but they've just gotten more joy out of watching the purple yeah. and gold. Maybe they, you know, they watch Magic or they watch somebody win a title. But I, I hear you. Like, I'm from Minnesota, so yeah. I rep those teams first. Right. But I've been in L.A. for 10 years now, so you can, all, you can adopt the Dodgers, no, the Rams. Yeah, you can adopt. secondary team. No, yeah, you can adopt. Yes. You know, but if I'm saying you, if you're from a hometown, you can't hate your hometown team. I'm with that, actually. You know what yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, I'm it's with like that. that. Yeah, it, yeah, it's loyalty. Yeah. You want right. me, Ty? All the way. Cool. Cool. Shout out to Ty. Now we're running things over there. Uh, are you a early bird or a night owl? One millisecond would like to know. Uh, early bird. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, early bird. I'm, I'm like a grandpa, honestly. Um, I can't really stay up that late. I'm always tired. Uh, yeah. No. You and Lonzo. That's something you guys seem to share. Huh? Oh, always tired. Yeah. Uh, I try to go to bed by like midnight, you know. At the uh, latest? At the latest, okay. you know, for sure. Um, I think, you know, of course, you know, sleep is important. What time do you wake up? Um, like, probably 7.30 in the morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah it go. doesn't matter. I may fall asleep at 2. I'll wake up at 7.30. That's just how I'm programmed. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Mark wants to know, what's your favorite video game or some of your favorite video games? Uh, video games. Um, There's some big gamers on this team. Yeah, there is. I'm not one of That's them. That's not no. you? Okay. I used to be. I used to be. Not no more, though. But uh, Call of Duties. Um, 2Ks, Madden, FIFA, you know, any type of sports game outside of hockey games, I'm pretty, um, I like. Who do, you, who do you play with in FIFA usually? FIFA, um, I play with like uh, PSG. Okay. Play with them. Um, Mess with Neymar Munich, a little bit? Uh, Munich a little bit. Bayern Munich, okay. Uh huh. I play with those teams. Okay. Um, I used to like this game called SOCOM. So it was a, it's like a army game back in PS2. Okay. Uh, all the Mario games, you know, like those old sure. school stuff. I was sure. more old school. So you, I mean, Nintendo 64, you were a kid when that came out, right? Yeah. Did you have 64? I, I, I had that. Yeah, that I was, had a Sega. You, did you ever get Goldeneye? 007? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, Goldeneye. Yeah, Goldeneye. That one was real. Fun. Super Smash. Yeah, Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right, Jay Hardesty wants to know your all-time starting five. And I'm always curious to ask somebody who's 22, you know, their all-time starting five because it's you know, there's only so many players you were able to watch. Yeah. You know, but I'm just curious. Do you I know have basketball, a, though. I'll be all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, no, but I'm saying yeah, so, yeah. so people, a lot of people have, you know, Bill Russell and Kareem and, uh, and kind of, and then mix in, like Kobe's was Magic, Michael, Bird, Kareem, and Russell, I think. Right. Uh, but what, what's yours? What, how do you go all time? All time? Um, whew, magic, magic at the point. You know, it's not because he's my boss, but, you know, I think he's, you're safe on that one. Nobody's going to argue with that. Nobody's going to argue with that. Can't argue with that. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely going Kobe, MJ, and my two and the three. You know, just to keep them there. Mm -hmm. Too competitive. To, you know, to lose. Mm -hmm. um, put Bron in there at the four. 
you know, because I feel like he can guard damn near anybody. Sure. And at the five, I'm going to go with Shaq because, you know, very dominant. So, uh, it's a tough squad. I'm going to go with that. Right. I'm going to go with that one. Right, I like that. Versatility, you know, could run. I like that one. That seems to be all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Who is your uh, – Payne's Vapor would like to know, who's your bestie on the team? Bestie? Yeah, like your BFF. Oh, not Lonzo. Definitely not him. Uh, that nah. probably means Lonzo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yeah, Lonzo. Yeah. Uh, Lonzo, uh, Jay Hart. Um, Jay Hart's a funny guy. You know, a lot of you guys probably don't know him too much because, you know, he doesn't get the, 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 the fame and glitz that other people on his team do. But, you know, Jay Hart's my guy. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas Bryant is a clown. No, I'm, I'm – I wouldn't say I have a bestie, you know. That's your rookie uh, class, though. It's your rookie, rookie all, class. All of them. Yeah, rookie class. What, what's uh, for cool everybody? You know, for people that don't know Lonzo, uh, what what's he like? Like, what's uh, what's Lonzo about off the court? Uh, clown, definitely a clown. Uh, you know, he's very serious, uh, monotoned in interviews and on the court, but you know, off the court, you know, he he's always laughing, dancing. Um, you know, acts like he's thirteen. So uh, that's that's what he is for sure. So y'all don't, don't know the real him. So he he keeps yeah. it light and loose off the court with you Not guys. Not light and loose, like loose. Just loose. Loose. You had it. Loose cannon. I know? thought that was supposed to be a, his youngest brother was the loose cannon. I thought that was. Oh, uh, he's a different story. Oh yeah. no, no, he's a different story. You don't even want to. <laughs> I wouldn't even call him loose. I don't even know what to call him. Okay. All right. I don't even know what to call him. Good. Uh, all right. Let's see. If you weren't a basketball player. Who is, uh, what would you be from Mercado? Uh, if I wasn't a basketball player, um, damn. Yeah, we, when we did, we did that piece on kind of how you grew up in basketball, and I think you, you know, from a pretty early age, that you told your teachers, or yeah. you were one of those guys, that was, that was, that was what the plan was, and here yeah. you are. So, yeah, but can you think know. of something else you might uh, like to do? Shoot, coach. Can I be a basketball coach? Sure. Uh, I'll be a yeah. basketball coach. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Do what you want, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. That. What's uh what's your favorite home cooked meal from Mama Coos? Chris would like to know. Um, man, Mama Coos, she makes pretty good fried chicken. Um, what else? Lasagna, that's pretty big time. Mm -hmm. Um, got a good chili bowl. Um, one of those three. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now you have uh, is it? Am I, you have you have two younger siblings? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. brother and sister. Yeah. How are they doing? Uh, doing good. Okay. You know, my brother. Uh, he likes being, uh, you know, more famous than I think I do. You know, oh, yeah? he like, oh, oh yeah, he's the worst. You know, he, <laughs> no, no, he's the absolute worst. Like he, uh, you know, he likes. All sorry, the, buddy. Yeah, no, not sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish he's hearing this too right now. But <laughs> no, nah, I'm uh, a younger brother, so I'm relating to him. Yeah. No, yeah. he 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 wants all the designer clothes. He wants oh. the Instagram likes. He wants the Instagram followers. Mm. So now, so now that you made the league, he's he's what is he texting? He, like, you he say likes he's, being in the. He likes. He's more excited about being in the league than I am, for got sure. Because oh, he just likes the perks. Is he in high school right now? High school. So yeah. does he wear the Kuzman jersey every day? He doesn't wear that. Okay. But uh, you know, he wears just to make this, sure uh, hoodie. I bought about. him. I bought him like a four hundred dollar hoodie, and uh, he wears it every single day. Some Clarkson type stuff. Uh. The, the designer stuff. Yeah, something like that. You know, I looked out for him one time. It's nice. Was, it kept bothering me. So that's nice of you, man. Yeah. Giving back to the family. Trying to. All right, that Ty Dollar sign. What, how how are we looking on time? All right, we'll keep them up. People have more questions for you, Coosers. You know, it sounds like you need a nap, based on the fact that you're always tired. Yeah, yeah. Any advice, Carlo wants to know from uh, from somebody or let's see, from you to all who want to dream big and be an elite ball player like you. Uh, coming from the Philippines, there are a ton of Laker fans in the Philippines. By yeah. the way, shout you out know, to the Philippines. Shout out to uh, Jay Clark. Uh, he's Filipino. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. Filipino. yeah. Clarkson's part Filipino, Filipino for sure. Filipino. Yeah, good. Oh, um, man, you know, just just a dream big, like you said. Um, I feel like, for me, nobody thought I was going to be here. Um, you know, I wasn't highly recruited. Um, I was probably the last person that you would think that would be in the situation I am. So, um, you know, just to dream big and work hard, you know. Um, if, you, if you can do those things and, you know, remain humble and, um, stay grounded. I feel like, you know, anything is really possible. And, um, you know, it's really paid off for me to, you know, focus on those three things. And um, I feel like if I made it, anybody can. So. Gotcha. 
All right, there's a, a couple more on here. Um, let me let me kind of I'll I'll mold a couple of these. Are you a wrestling fan? Some wrestling people want. Yeah, to, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, some people want to know Stone Cold or The Rock. If you had to pick between. Oh, damn, that's a tough one. I used to be a rock guy. Yeah. Um, I used to love wrestling. Uh, People's champ. I was big big on him, but Stone Cold Steve Austin probably there's my little, second. There's a little rock resemblance. Yeah, you, I used yeah. to have the eyebrow. I, yeah, I, yeah. I ain't got it no more. Okay. Though. Yeah. Um, but Stone Cold Triple H. I don't know. There's so many great ones, but I'm gonna go with the Rock. Okay. Uh, in that battle, but uh, you know, Stone Cold Stunner was you know serious for sure. So you know, after the Houston game, in which uh, you had 38, and you know everything was going in, you start nine for nine. Uh, the the off court interview that we did. Uh, got a little attention based on what you said because I, I essentially asked you, "Hey man, did, yeah. some, did you expect to be scoring like this?" And you you didn't even have to think about it. You're like, "Well, yeah, like this is this is what I." So at the same time as you're saying that nobody would have put you in this spot, you did. Uh -huh. So um, uh, is that the kind of the point? Is that you never doubted yourself, and so whatever everybody else thought, you weren't gonna you weren't gonna stop until you found a way to mm -hmm. to be where you are. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if you if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. So, you know, you can believe in yourself all you can until people believe in you. So you, you kind of force people to believe in you by you believing in yourself so much. Hmm. So, Le Okay, so the way that games work, the, the NBA game in the last couple minutes, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it seems to kind of go into just high screen roll. Uh -huh. And that isn't, you, you seem to get a lot of your points, whether it's on the wing or coming off of curls or uh, transition, you just kind of create your own offense without plays being called for you. Yeah. How do you think you could, you could work and operate in one of those more controlled kind of, okay, high screen roll, uh, manipulate the defense, that, that kind of a game, which the NBA seems to get to for all the best wings at some point. What do you mean by like, so okay. Exactly. So yeah. so when you're like if you're catching the ball like sometimes LeBron late in the game or Durant they'll basically just ice clear everybody out get the ball on the top of the floor maybe call for a screen oh, and okay, cut right okay. and try to run the try to score that way it's like when everything else is broken down oh, okay. and you're not able to get and so I'm just you've got you've got a lot of tools but mm -hmm. I'm wondering how do you think that that you could play in that kind of a game if you oh, had to. Oh, I mean I think I can do pretty well. Yeah. I think for the most part I make good uh, good decisions mm -hmm. on the floor. Um, um, you know, that's not necessarily my role on the team right now, and I, I understand that. Um, so, you know, I kind of just deal with what my role is, you know. That's, you know, scoring through the offense, you know, whatever's given is given. You know, if I have open shots, take it. Um, you know, I try to be a player that scores really efficient, um, you know, with not many plays called or many dribbles, mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that. You know, so I just try to you know, play my role that way. You know, I don't try to, hey, come here, you know, it's not, it's not me right now. Right. I understand that. Right. So. Yeah. Well, and, and look, and you're, you've been very efficient, especially for a rookie. Uh, almost 50% from the field, almost 40% for three. You, you were there, except for that, you know, last night yeah. brought your average Ooh. down a little bit. Um, but as you said, that happens. And, you know, look, it almost evens out. What were you? You were like 12 for 17 the other night. So, you know, so that brought it up. This just kind of evened that one out a little bit. Yeah. Um, all right, a couple more. Who has the most swag? Who's in the locker room? This is from Jarrell. Uh, it just whatever you like, honestly. You know, everybody has a different type of swag. Um, you know, JC has a lot. Um, How do you define swag? It just confidence. You know, um, you can, you can like for instance, you. I'm not saying you. You know, but you can put on a whole bunch of Gucci stuff. Sure. Would you feel, would you feel confident wearing all that, all the, the glamour and whatnot, and glitz and stuff? Depends. It depends, but I, I see Could what you're you pull saying. It off? The, uh, Could you pull it off? You know, I, not as well as you, I don't think. Exactly. See, it's yeah. all about your confidence. Yeah. You know, if you say, damn, I can pull this off, then it's mm -hmm. swag. You know? I mean, look, my, my suits look pretty good, don't you think, oh, on game yeah, days? Yeah, 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 yeah. A little baggy, but Those are pretty no, I'm just playing. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> just got some, some, some of the pants are so tight, I can barely sit down. No, I'm just playing. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> a little baggy, man. We're gonna have to, you're gonna have to send me to your no, tailor after playing. all this. Um, I see what playing. you're saying. So if you put it, if you put some, just because you go and buy Gucci, doesn't mean that you're selling it's it. Swag, yeah. And yeah. that's what you think. Yeah, swag. You know, for me, you know, I just, you know, I'm once I'm on a rookie contract, so I ain't got that much. I got a lot of money, but it's not. Yeah. I'm, you know what I mean. No, you well, know what I mean. I'm not sure. It, yeah. If you would, look, if they, I, you would have had I, more if they would redo do the draft today. Redo the draft. You would have more. I probably would have more. Gucci. You would have more. But you know, I'm the basic H and M, um, Zara, um, 
urban outfitters. That's where I shop. Well, you know? when you're asking, okay, when you you're asking, you can, you know, dress for less. Sure. And, you know, have swag. But here's the thing. I agree. The brands that, that cost that much more, right, don't necessarily look better. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just want people to know that you have the brands. Exactly. And to me, that doesn't make it cool. So that's no, why, so doesn't. can you pull it off? I mean, I guess, but do you want people to know that you spent that much on exactly. it? Exactly. Why, right? Yeah. And that's the thing you got to be asking yourself. Right, right. All right. Duma, and this may be the last one. Congrats so far on a great rookie season. From This is from, uh, yeah, Sanely and Saifel. What has been your favorite nickname you've been given thus far? I personally love Coos Control, uh, which we should shout out Jay Diaz uh, for coming up with during summer league hashtag suiting up together mm. uh, what what do you think uh nicknames have you had a have you had a better one than that or something that fit your i think that's like the only one i have though cool's control yeah and i don't, Clues, know, I don't think cool's is a nickname you know it's, is it a it's nickname? A, i mean kind of it's, it's it's a short version of your it's name it's a short but, you know, version yeah it's yeah just sort of a nickname yeah. uh, i mean cool's cool cool's control yeah i like the cool's control you know being our cruise you uh -huh. know i like that one um Yes, yeah. I got. <laughs> well, the 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 fact that you know what we're good. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't even know any of your other. I, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah Kuz, I so that. I like it too. Yeah, you that's know. good. All right. Well, look, Kuz, we appreciate your time, man. Hey. Thanks for talking to the anytime, people. Anytime, man. All right. Anytime. All right. Kyle Kuzma, guys. At some point, we'll have you back on. And for now, guys, that it's a it's a long 41 plus year relationship between Toyota and the Lakers. Uh, something that I know they appreciate very much. Toyota Voices. We'll see you guys next time.